In this presentation, I address a debate that has divided and continues to divide broadcast professionals and theorists studying broadcasting. Namely, broadcast professionals use live and recorded to identify two distinct production modes, whereas most theorists in broadcast scholarship challenge this polar opposition. Theorists argue, for instance, that a live newscast cannot be truly live because the news anchor is reading his or her lines from a pre-written script. The inclusion of recordings in a live feed suggests that the polarity between live and recorded must be unfounded. Theorists also point out that even when a live program is unscripted, the program is still prepared and scheduled in advance. In opposition, some theorists have claimed that breaking news reports are entirely unscripted and unscheduled and therefore they must be live. This argument, however, was countered again as other theorists responded that even this catastrophe liveness inevitably comes to an end when pre-recorded images, in particular footage of the disaster itself, are repeated, allowing reporters to summarize the events for viewers that have just tuned in. Many theorists now believe that liveness in broadcasting is either ideological, short-lived, or only a matter of degree. In this presentation, I will explain that theorists who problematize this pol polarity are mistaken and that live and recorded do identify two distinct broadcast production modes. To argue my case, I will trace the semantic history of the binary pair live recorded. The first use of the term live as the opposite of recorded, was traced to radio broadcasting by Oxford English Dictionary. This is striking because the term live is also used in connection with theatre and performance arts. So intuitively, one would assume that the term live predates technological means of recording, such as radio. My theory, however, concurs with Oxford English Dictionary. More specifically, I claim that the binary live recorded was pressed into service by radio technicians as they established a technical vocabulary. Historically, the roles of the radio technician and the radio host overlapped. However, as radio production matured to a commercial enterprise, those roles became separate. From the perspective of the technicians monitoring the process of transmission, there are now two distinct operational procedures. namely when a living person hosts a program, as opposed to when no living person is needed, because the materials have been pre-recorded. By this definition, live and recorded also denote time-based opposites, because when a production is live, it is implied that the performance by the radio host coincides with the act of transmission. Conversely, when a broadcast production is recorded, it is implied that the host's performance took place in the past and precedes the moment of transmission. Live and recorded describe time-based concepts because speciality is not a determining factor. For instance, when technicians agree that the Christmas speech by the English king is live, they do so because the king's presentation coincides with the transmission process, regardless of whether or not those technicians are present on site. Observe that the time-based definition of recorded is at odds with the dominant meaning of recorded, which is spatiotemporal. In other words, when radio technicians adopted the term recorded to identify a specific radio production mode, they narrowed its meaning from spatiotemporal to time-based. It is this discrepancy that explains why contemporary theorists challenge the binary live recorded. At this juncture, the binary pair live recorded is used strictly by radio professionals, i.e. people that belong to the community of senders. Gradually, however, this terminology trickles into the community of receivers, that is, the radio listeners. Naturally, radio listeners have to establish the meaning of this new terminology. Radio listeners are already accustomed to using the term recorded in connection with sound reproduction technologies, for instance gramophone recordings. So consequently, 
radio listeners interpret recorded not as a time-based concept but as a spatio-temporal one. In fact, this situation persists into the present day for we think of recorded in connection with broadcast production as a spatio-temporal concept. It is this discrepancy that explains why contemporary theorists challenge the binary live recorded. The example of catastrophe liveness also makes clear that attempts to balance the binary live recorded are futile and that the ongoing debate in academia that challenges this binary is simply unsolvable. That is, unless one realizes that live and recorded describe time-based concepts when they are used in connection with broadcast production. The crucial difference between the community of the senders and the community of the receivers is that the senders use live and recorded as technical terms that serve a specific procedural purpose. Conversely, the radio listeners are not involved with the production process. In sum, for radio listeners and television viewers, the meaning of live becomes effective, that is, it describes the sense that a program is live, irrespective of its actual technical, i.e. procedural, status as live. This insight is critical for broadcast scholarship that studies the reception. The relevance of those discussions is not about calling into question whether or not those productions are truly live, because, as I have explained, the meaning of life is concrete only when used by the senders. Instead, the relevance of those debates is about studying and analyzing the strategies or devices that the industry deploys to generate a feeling of liveness. One wonders why do broadcast professionals not point out that live and recorded describe time-based concepts? The answer is that contemporary broadcast technicians are simply unaware. They too define recorded as a spatio-temporal concept. Let me explain. The initial generation of radio technicians who defined the binary live recorded as time-based concepts eventually passed away. Obviously, they were succeeded by new generations of technicians. However, those fresh technicians naturally grew up as listeners, i.e. as members of a community that conceived recorded as a spatiotemporal concept. Consequently, over time, the community of broadcast professionals became entirely composed of biased members. In sum, the knowledge that the term recorded is time-based when used in connection with broadcast production has simply vanished. I will now explain how the term live became used outside of broadcast production and in particular in connection with theatre and performance arts. Note that at this juncture live is used exclusively in connection with broadcasting. To use the term live in connection to any other forms of communication, for instance theatre, would be without meaning, i.e. absurd. As we have seen, when the binary live recorded was picked up by radio listeners, they conceived recorded as spatiotemporal. They gathered that live and recorded must be opposites from the way the technicians were using both terms. Thus, radio listeners equally construed live as a spatiotemporal concept. However, radio listeners had no way of verifying whether an alleged live production is actually live, because they are spatially dispersed. However, when live as a spatio-temporal concept became used in connection with direct forms of communication, such as theater, where the senders and the receivers do share a spatio-temporal frame, it matched the situation and the meaning of live becomes concrete and evidential, which explains how live eventually became used in connection with theater, dance and performance arts in general. To summarize, I have argued that radio technicians paired live and recorded together in an oppositional relationship to identify two distinct production modes. Radio technicians defined live and recorded as time-based concepts. In doing so, they narrowed the meaning of recorded from spatio-temporal to time-based. This terminology was subsequently adopted by radio listeners. As we have seen, radio listeners displaced the time-based definition of recorded by the spatio-temporal definition. The time-based definition of recorded thus disappeared, and as a result, life as a time-based concept became an orphan. 
In fact, the notion that life is context-dependent persists into the present day. As recorded was conceived as a spatiotemporal concept, it brought into existence life as a spatiotemporal concept. This widening of the meaning of life made it possible that life became used outside of its native contexts, i.e., from broadcast technologies to non-broadcast technologies.